Welcome everyone to Philadelphia, the second round of the NCAA tournament with a 2-15 matchup as the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles take on Georgetown with the winner playing either Oklahoma or San Diego State. That's a good evening everyone with Hall of Famer Reggie Miller and Lenny Elmore, Kevin Harlan, thank you so much for joining us. All right, uh, how do you assess this matchup, this 2 against 15? Well, Florida Gulf Coast, Sherwood Brown, the best athlete on this team. Up-tempo style for these Eagles. Look for a lot of isolation plays. Should be exciting. Well, since their 2007 appearance in the Final Four, Georgetown's record in this tournament is 2-4. and four. Now, this is a young team. This is a hungry team. They're not just happy to be here. They don't want to exit too soon. They've never been here, Florida Gulf Coast. And moments ago, the coaches addressed this uh, very rambunctious group. I think you'll enjoy it. Jimmy, Jimmy Valvano, I can't, I can't compare with him. He's, he's one of the all-time great speech givers and motivators, so I'm not even going to try, fellas. Now, Newt Rockman, you know who Newt Rockman is? I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're, we, arranged, uh, we arranged a worldwide, world-renowned philosopher to give you a motivational speech. He has sayings like, we start at the bottom, and now we're at the top. Mr. Sherwood Brown. <laughs> Y'all know we earned to be here. We earned the right to be here. Nobody gave it to us. And the referee's not going to give it to us. Ain't nobody going to give it to us now. So we got to go out there and take it. Feel me? Now, if you, if you with me, everybody stand up and throw them up. They are a loose group, and that guy that was speaking there, Sherwood Brown, the Atlantic Sun Player of the Year. And cast your eyes on Otto Porter Jr., number 22. He is the sharpshooter from a little town in Missouri who found his way to the nation's capital, and now at Georgetown leads not only that team but the Big East, and they're coached by ninth-year head man John Thompson III, whose dad is here, John Thompson. That guy's done a terrific job, a very overachieving Hoya team. And we just saw moments ago the head coach of the Eagles, Andy Enfield, now in his second season with the Eagles. He played college basketball at Johns Hopkins, and he still holds the all-time NCAA record for free throw percentage, over 92%. Well, we have a decorated crew that's going to officiate this game, beginning with Jamie Lucky, three Final Fours. Rick Randall has been involved in 15 NCAA tournaments, and Terry Moore has officiated 15 tournaments and two Elite Eights. The Florida Gulf Coast Eagles in their tournament debut. Only six years they've been a D1 school, and only two years, this the second, where they've been eligible, and away we go from Philadelphia. Two contrasting styles here. As you mentioned, a lot of isolation plays as Rick Coleman gets the first basket to go. These Eagles like to get up and down, play free and loose, more structured, Princeton-style offense for the Hoyas of Georgetown. Hopkins has it. He is hounded there defensively, as you can see. Twisting and turning. Fires on the move, and a foul goes on the Eagles. I'll tell you what, that 2-3 <laughs> is not a static 2-3. I mean, they were swarming it. Colorado and Illinois coming to a close. Reminds you of that. That's on TNT. Off the line. Markel, I'm not Markel starts, but Mikhail Hopkins, the sophomore from Hyattsville, Maryland. He's been a starter all season. Georgetown right now in a 1 2 2 full court press. Just to see if they can handle it. Over and back on Brown. And the reason why that's over and back, he didn't establish himself back in the back court. Started in the front court and was straddling the line when he caught the basketball, therefore over and back. Defense! 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 On the wing, it starts. Markel starts. Junior leads the team and three point shots made. They break the press right here. Our Thompson back is inside, and it sure is. Hopkins got up high, packed it away. Say what these, these Eagles of Florida Gulf Coast, they play fast. They break the press here and 
Thompson goes in among three great jerseys, gets the ball on the glass quickly. Well, that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to attack. Yeah. And now they can apply some pressure of their own, and they've got Bernard Thompson. He's got 96 steals, second in the nation in total steals, sixth in the nation in average, and this young man gets his hands on a lot of passes. Trollick with a three. And the rebound collected inside by Chase Fielder. Well, that makes it interesting for the Eagles here. You talked about the steals. As a team, they're 15th in the nation in steals. Fielder, nice fake. Flying by with Hopkins. Brown, a three. Rebound pulled down by Otto Porter Jr. Lubick the other way on the fly. A foul. Looked like Brown was a shot in there and picked it up. Located in Fort Myers, Florida. Almost uh, 13,500 students. Just founded back in 1997. They were telling us yesterday they began with trailers out in some field. And sure enough, here they are in the NCAA tournament. And playing one of the big boys from the Big East, Georgetown. How about this? Had to go on the road in the Atlantic Sun to Mercer to win the, the conference championship. Got down early. Coach Infield, the guys, a lot of the guys, he says, look, Reg, you're not going to see a bunch of looser guys. They really play for one another. He has a little bit of an NBA pedigree, obviously, working with Mike Bernardi, Rick Pitino. Uh, they were at Boston and Milwaukee, respectively, so their offers will reflect that. And look, they're not in awe of Georgetown. No. They beat Miami earlier this year. They lost to VCU. They played at Duke. They played at Iowa State. You know, they know what it's like to play against the big fellas. Thompson got the rebound and shoves it back in for the Eagles. He now has four. They play fast. They play loose. They play hungry. Obviously led by Thompson. And Brown, and to me, the most important player tonight is going to be Coleman. He leads this team in assists. And really get after you. Fantastic in the open court. Well, Florida Gulf Coast won the Atlantic Sun Tournament. They beat number one seed Mercer. Coming having won five consecutive games, 12 of 14. And out of Florida Junior to Lubin. Here comes Hopkins. Down the lane and count. Oh, nice charge it there. It sure was. And Eddie Murray is the one who took the charge. It's a foul. And it's called on Hopkins for the first time. Well, that's outstanding help. Absolutely. Man. And he anticipated exactly where the dribbler was going and took that spot away from him plenty of time. And it's the steals particularly that allows Florida Gulf Coast to run. They get the live ball steals and they take off. Here's Bernard Johnson. Feeler goes down low. Comer looking for a screen. Lubick is watching him as it starts. Feeler. And that is over the back and a foul called on Eddie Murray. Checked in just moments ago. Murray will pick up his first for the Eagles. That's two times I've seen Feeler with that pump bait to get a couple Hoyas in the air. It's a pretty good shot fake. Now he's just got to concentrate on that shot. Georgetown in their fourth consecutive NCAA tournament. Seven times they've been here in the last eight years under John Johnson III. He was picked up by Brown. Thompson is uh, with on trial. And the three will not drop their starts. Trollick, Porter. Knocked away, nice rejection inside by Feeler. Here comes Bernard Thompson the other way. And Otto Porter might have an argument that looked like it was coming down. Thompson for three. And Lubick collects it inside for the Hoyas. They push the pedal to the middle. Power. Porter. He was going to make sure on that one. He might have blocked my shot in the previous play. Oh, what wow, a what pass, pass by Comer, and Murray could not convert. And the other way racing is Jabril Trollick. Once again, the C-15 can't afford yep. lost opportunities like that. you got to make sure, though. They're not turning the ball over. Murray is watching Otto Porter Jr. Yeah, he's exactly doing that, watching him. Yeah. <laughs> Admiring that jumper. Eagles player of the year. Comer will try to penetrate 
take it inside. Georgetown picks up the foul. Ten up. Thank you. You can see the Illini will now take on two seed Miami. That's a beauty Sunday down in Austin. Other side of that is a look at the bottom of the East, Butler and Marquette. Here, Georgetown is on top of Florida Gulf Coast by a point, about four and a half into this one here. And what about the A-10? They have been terrific. Six and O oh, start to this tournament. Yeah, well, they're proving something to a lot of people. You know, unfortunately, a team like Butler uh, it's going to be leaving the A-10 next year to join the new conference, but they've made their mark, no question about it. So has VCU, and maybe the best of all of them is going to be St. Louis. Butler will be in the Big East. They go inside. They're looking for Feeler. It was collected, brought down by Devante Smith-Rivera, who has just checked in, has the ball right now, makes the defensive run. Yeah, he's emerged as that third option scorer for the Georgetown Hoyas, but to your point, and then uh, another turnover by the Eagles. Smith Rivera. Opportunity. Feeler collects the ball. Here comes Brett Comer. Murray with a screen, switch oh, ID. Okay. And Murray again fumbles one down below. That's the second time he's gotten it right underneath. And Comer's had about three passes for layups. So they haven't been able to convert. That's off the foot of Ahoy and out of bounds. Ricochet is away. In the end field on the side for... This very young team. And good substitution. You know, those plays are available. And if Murray can't catch it, then maybe so midnight. Look, exactly. Did you see it? How about Comer? Comer threw it off the back of the Hoya player with his back turned to the defense. Smart heads up play. And I'll never understand that kind of defensive position. You don't get much out of turning away from the guy. You have a better chance of deflecting the ball facing it. That's funny. You learn that at the lowest level of basketball, never to turn your back. Markel Starks puts in a three. He's a 42% three-point shooter. We mentioned earlier that with his uh, 60th three-point shot made, he leads him in that category. He's all Big East 13. Here's Brown from Orlando, Florida. Comer is picked up by Starks. McKnight, who just checked in, set the screen. Brown for three. Back the roll in the box. Nice answer there. By Sherwood Brown on Mar after Markel Starks' three. They're going to need his offense. We've had six lead changes here in a little over seven minutes in Philadelphia. Starks, screened by Lubick. Out of order, Jr. And Starks with Brown coming up on him. Five, the hole by Brown, and that's a foul called on Sherwood Brown. He picks up a foul there. And How about that? Right off yeah, Lubick. Yeah, you said you, you can never understand that. Lubick had his I head turned. didn't see anything. No, he didn't. Look at the, the iron kind there to Sherwood Brown. If I'm coach Andy Enfield, I couldn't have asked for a better start to this game for my 15 seated Florida Gulf Coast Eagles. Wow, what great news down the lane. Smith Rivera couldn't get it to go. They just switched that foul, by the way. Comer is the one to pick it up. Kraft has now come in for Florida Gulf Coast. And inside driving was Bernard Thompson. He was the A-Sun Defensive Player of the Year. He's doing a lot to make this offense of the Eagles go. Starks picks up his first for Georgetown. Well, Reggie, you were talking about they need Brown's offense. Well, they're going to need Brown, Feeler, and Thompson. They score 41.5 of the 73 points. Watch live games on your computer, your iPhone, iPad, and select Android devices with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. In Philadelphia, approaching 13 to play in the first half. The drive by starts with great speed, and by McKnight, he comes up with his seventh point. I mean, very deceptive speed, too. When he came off that pick and roll, that next step, he was right at the rim. 
That young man has another gear of yeah. over again. Johnson gets a McKnight screen, pick and roll. Knight could not find the handle. Lubick is on the floor, digging that ball out. And they get the tie-up. It'll be Georgetown's ball. We're going to take a look at Starks. He just turned it on. That last bounce before taking off. And he got past Graf with ease. And if you're McKnight, you got to rotate over. You can't be hugged up on Lubick down low. When that guard is coming down the lane, make yourself big. Either take the charge or contest the shot. He contested it, but it just happened to be late. Starks has had some big games this season against some big-name programs. He had 21 against UCLA in the Legends class. He had 21 against Indiana. So he has been hurt from this season. The last 13 games in particular, he's been terrific. Smith Rivera has it now. Ludic. Smith Rivera is picked up by Brown. The aforementioned Starks. The drive and the reverse. Count it. And a foul. And what made that move so great is almost like the pump bait and froze the de defender right there. Just one dribble up and under. And where's the, the help? If you're a blue jersey, you've got to rotate late. You can't tell me this young man is not into it. <laughs> McKnight picks up his second personal foul. Markel starts. He went to Georgetown. Prep is up there. 74% free throw shooter. And he's already accounted for nine of the Hoyas' 14 points. Full strip right there, and Brown has the rebound. 12 and a half to play. We're in the first half, and uh, we have a official timeout. Uh, I think they're talking about the shot clock. I don't know if it started once the ball was in play. So then Ichiman has checked in from Croatia for Enfield's Eagles. 35 seconds to see right there. It is not started. And it should. On Grant, who is a freshman from Charlotte with the ball. Murray to Graf. Nice ball rotation. Sherwood Brown puts up a three. Rebound by Smith Rivera. Yeah, Brown must be feeling a little bit of the pressure. He's aimed in that shot instead of letting it fly. Out of Florida, Jr. Faradell is on him. Christoph Faradell from Switzerland. Porter starts. And Smith Rivera. Ayegba has come in for the first time for the Hoyas, and outside it goes here. Trowick and Smith Rivera. Over Veridale. Okay, Smooth. Good use of the shot clock for John Thompson to Georgetown Hoyas. Great ball movement, side to side, inside out. Good off the dribble move there by Smith Rivera. And they were able to play their pace. Little 6 nothing run here for Georgetown on top by 5. 11-16 to play in the first half for Philadelphia. Back live in Philadelphia as Georgetown leads Florida Gulf Coast 16-11. Fun story here, Andy Enfield of Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, his wife, Amanda Markham, is a big-time sports fan, but she's also a former supermodel. And I mean, she has graced the covers of magazines like Maxim, L, Vogue, and many more. Now, they met back in 2003, enjoyed a car ride from New York to Boston for a college football basketball game. The next week, they went on their first date, ate a Taco Bell. Eight months later, Enfield proposed, and get this, the ring was squeezed in between two Krispy Kreme donuts inside the box. She said yes, model career over, and now nine years later, they have three kids, and Markham is as happy as she can be being a coach's wife. I guess you call her a model wife or something like that, right? Yeah, right. That looks she doesn't like look very happy right now. Looks like their son could use a Krispy Kreme donut. <laughs> Teeth on that. Three kids, and uh, Frank, he was telling us a story that he recruited one of the kids on this team at night while he was at his wife's bedside as she was delivering <laughs> their towel. <laughs> I guess they don't know any... Any different. These college coaches, they got to recruit all the time as the Hoyas are out of the blocks and off to the races and a foul. 
Going the other way, did Bernard Thompson lean in there? Or was it Veridel? It was Thompson who picked up his first for the Eagles. Well, we told you Otto Porter is a master of many trades. Not only can he score, handle, make plays, but he can certainly play some defense. And that time, terrific job trailing the play and blocking the shot. Looks like Coach Infield may need to go back to that 2-3 zone. I thought it was pretty effective early on. He's gotten away with it, the man-to-man -man defense. Georgetown has really picked him apart with this Princeton offense. Porter missing from outside. Iagba set a nice screen. Here comes Thompson the other way with Comer back in the contest for Florida Gulf Coast. Feeler, Thompson, Comer. Starks is defending. Here comes Brown, slithering inside. Shot clock is down to 14. Thompson. And chased down by Markel Starks. Galloping, floating. And Lubick touches it back in for the Hoyers. Excellent running there by Lubick in transition. But it makes you wonder what Eddie Murray was thinking. He could never have gotten up to that teardrop and got himself out of position. But it was Markel Starks is getting it done right now for Georgetown. His ability to beat people off the bounce certainly is impressive as he flies down the baseline as well. You give him a sliver of light, and he's going to open the door wide. Someone offensively for Florida Gulf Coast has to make something. Well, we can't get it right there from Chase Feeler. They're getting pretty good shots, Kev. They just don't, can't seem to knock him down. Iona, Ohio State is about to tip off on CBS. One of the four networks covering the tournament from top to bottom starts. Oh, screen by Agba again. And against the loose ball over Feeler. And Porter cleans it up. He can't put it in. Well, he rushed that shot at your Porter Jr. Take your time on that rebound. Homer. Porter. And the Hoyas. And a share of the Big East title in the regular season come the other way. Porter on the move. He comes up short. Here comes Sherwood Brown. Off to Comer. Slashing in from the left side. And Brown can't tip it in with a foul. Well, the boys are back, and by boys, we mean men at work. Brand new season of Men at Work premieres Thursday, April 14th at 10, 9 Central, only on TBS. Very funny. Sherwood Brown, 65% free throw shooter at the line for the Eagles. And guys, when the pace gets like it was, up and down, up and down several times, that becomes Florida Gulf Coast's pace. And, you know, they thrive on it. And you take yeah, a look at the get, Georgetown guys. They're going to make shots. Out. They do, but they're wearing Georgetown down a little bit. That's why the substitution's right there. After that last uh, sequence, Otto Porter could barely get down on the other end. Brown from Olympia High School in Orlando. Leads him in points. Leads him in rebounding. He's the first player in the very short history of this school's basketball program with over 1,000 points. Yeah, there's no question they got to make shots. I mean, they, they've gotten opportunities now to... Shots they and free throws. The way. Eagles have missed seven consecutive shots. Over five minutes now since they've scored from the floor. Under nine to play here in the first half from Philadelphia. But just look, they're only down six and yep. they've missed all of that. They're wearing Georgetown down a bit. Hopkins who just checked in, set the screen for Smith Rivera, and a foul will go on Mikhail Hopkins from Hyattsville, Maryland. He picks up his second personal foul. Yeah, yeah. yeah when he rolled down the lanes there, look at Hopkins, Hopkins as he just really shoves Thompson down the lane. Yeah. That's a good call there by the official. That is indeed a moving screen. And now it looks like Georgetown in their zone. Comer. Harrison, they got back in there now, the freshman Graf. Comer with a little fake and a little razzle-dazzle. Takes it inside, picked up by Hopkins. That's eight consecutive misses mm -hmm. here for Florida Gulf. And again, no post-up presence makes it awfully hard. You're right, Lenny. Very small team for Florida Gulf Coast out of Fort Myers, Florida. Now, they had a couple dead-eye shooters. This would be a perfect offense for that, especially with the penetration of Thompson and Coleman. And then Bowen has checked in for the first time, and he finds uh, Hopkins inside. Smith Rivera missing on the shot. A twister right there by Bowen. 
It's picked up by Griff, and again they want to run Comer. Nice. Thompson, nice. and they get it to Brown. It was nice. beautifully nice. orchestrated. Ball hit the ground once, and after that it was all pass. And we have a four-point game. Excellent execution. Seven and a half to play in the half here in Philly. Tell you what, Sherwood Brown just moved Nate Lubick like it was nothing. Lubick inside, broken up on the play by Murray. Here comes Comer. He's a sophomore from Winter Park. And Hopkins. So it's these shots you have to make. Bernard Thompson with a three. He brings Florida Gulf Coast to within one. With about seven to play. They were down by seven. They've gone on a six-nothing run. And these are the confidence builders for a 15 seed in transition. We talked about the Eagles wanting to run. Well, they're starting to fly here in transition. Bernard Thompson with the three to cut the deficit to one. You got a ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we've got uh, number two, Georgetown, here in motion in Philadelphia. Here's how some other number two seeds have done in the tournament. Hey, Albany, uh, Albany put on a, a pretty good show in our very first game today versus Duke. I tell you what, you look at Ohio State, pretty similar to Georgetown, moderate pace, defensive base, and they're playing a team in Iona that's pretty similar to this team, Florida Gulf Coast. They like to get up and down and put points on the board. They may have the same kind of issues. Hopkins right that time was grabbed by Graff. So the Hoyas began 7 of 12, but they've grown cold. 1 of 9 since. They lead by just 1. We have just under 7 to play here in the first half. You take a look at some of the numbers right there. Nothing uh, standing out. You've been talking about the pace a lot here in the first half. Yeah, I think it's a battle for tempo. I mean, Georgetown can resist running with Florida Gulf Coast. They get an opportunity to hit the offensive glass and get some putbacks or run their offense. But Florida Gulf Coast wants to run up and down. They get Georgetown in a horse race. They usually win, and that's been the ebb and flow of this game. Well, at some point in time, the best player on the floor, which is Otto Porter Jr., is going to step up his game. Only two of six, four points. He's getting pretty good looks, but he's, he needs to put a stamp, especially in this first half, going forward. Mikhail Hopkins at the free throw line against Syracuse in the Big East tournament. 15 points, which was a career high. Two-point lead. You see his numbers on the season. For this Georgetown team that lost three of five, and then they went 13 and two as they concluded the year. They won 12 of their last 13. They really finished strong. And to bring that momentum into the NCAAs. Thompson. Feeler with a three. Oh, that's got to be a foul. Wow. How could they not see Boy, that? They look like Lubick had Thompson tied up, preventing him from getting that rebound. Inside, they went to Hopkins. Nice weak side help. I don't know if that was Feeler or Murray. Good fake by Thompson. Help. He slips and loses the ball. And a turnover right there. Hey, people, the first to know the latest news on all your teams with Bleacher Reports Team Stream app. Stay one step ahead. Check out TeamStream on your iPhone, iPad, or Android device today. Georgetown by three. They've led by as many as seven. Florida Gulf Coast has led by, has led by as many as three in a first half that has contained seven lead changes here in Philadelphia. And again, the tempo fight is really what's causing the lead change. Whoever sees this tempo and gets to play their game. Porter is two of four. Lubick went up and tried to tap that baby in with a foul inside, and it goes on the Hoyas. And I really b believe if you're Coach Andy Enfield, you are more, and you have been more productive when they've gone to that zone down here, that matchup zone. Looks like Georgetown is really having a tough time figuring it out, which is a little surprising to me being from their conference and going against Syracuse, who plays... 99% of the time against zone. Lubick picks up his first for Georgetown. Free throw line, Lenny Bernard Thompson. Yeah, this one's a little bit different in that they don't have, you know, the same type of length, and maybe that's the problem. Knocks that baby down. Coming up on the AT&T at the half. We'll get you caught up on all the latest tournament news, highlights, and updates. That's all coming up next on the AT&T at the half. Yeah, this zone that Florida Gulf Coast 
is playing is more predicated upon quickness and taking positions as opposed to length. Both teams are shooting in the mid-30s in this game. Communication is key, though, especially as much cutting and cutters that Georgetown does. Solid gun shot. Got to have great communication on the weak side back lane of that zone. Hopkins outside looking for Trollope. He makes the move and drives inside into Coma. The coach of the Eagles, Andy Enfield, told us before the game that he thought that if Sherwood and Comer were playing well, then our team has got a chance. So we're going to really monitor those guys because they seem to be uh, the guys that uh, contain the pulse, who control the pulse of the Eagles. And Andy Enfield was incensed with his weak side defense, saying they got to get over there a lot quicker as Georgetown has been able to exploit the baseline when they move the ball. No one in double figures in this game yet. Now looks like a nice zone here for Georgetown. Comer with a feeler screen. Here comes Brown. Lubick is over there nicely defensively. Shot clock is at seven. Murray the screen, Brown the three. Rebound climbing the ladder is Hopkins. Well, we talked about Otto Porter Jr. offensively getting it going. For the Hoyas, at some point in time, Sherwood Brown, the best athlete for Florida Gulf Coast. Same scenario. Once again, time to Hopkins. Up the way by Florida Gulf Coast. Feeler had a hand on it, but Comer gets it down in a hurry with creative passing like that one right there to Thompson. He kicked it from behind by Hopkins. Yeah, and that'll be a foul on the tall Hoya right there. Hopkins. We're talking about Bernard Thompson. We were talking about Brown getting it going. But how about the energy that Bernard Thompson been able to stretch the floor with his shooting? Now at the free throw line. Hopkins picks up his third, so they're going to take him out of the game, buddy. Yeah, I mean, they've got to be able to find a way to be able to stall and keep this game within reach until he gets back on the floor. Moses Ayegba, pretty good defensive player, certainly has had his moments in rebounding. He's in for hockey. Thompson just ties the game right there at 20. 9-2 run by Florida Gulf Coast. That's a three of six from the free throw line. You know, we're talking about when you're a 15 seed and you're trying to pull the upset in this tournament, almost like you've got to have a, a perfect game. Moses Iagba has checked in for the Hoyers, taking the place of Hopkins again with the three fouls. Lubick on top, he only averages seven. It's knocked away, good steal right there by Murray. Brown the other way, floats and puts it in. And now a two-point lead for Florida Gulf Coast. They led earlier by three. And see out of transition, they can run and they can score. And Georgetown and telegraphing passes kind of playing right into the hands. Well, what did Sherwood Brown say at the top of our show when he was addressing his teammates? The rough part, is it going to give us anything? Let's go out and take it. Well, he's certainly trying to show that they want to take this game. Smith Rivera, Ruby trying to set a screen. Brown comes over to defend. Shot clock is down by now six to five to four, three and a half to play in the half. Porter doesn't even know. He's two of seven, and that is a violation. Uh, Moving screen. Sure was. Iagba will pick it up for Georgetown. In transition, we talked about this is how the Eagles have to be able to compete against the Hoyas. Browns trying to get it going. Hot dog? I'm buying. I use my Capital One Venture card with double miles you can actually use to fly any airline anytime. What are you doing? I'm saving one for later. My body keeps it warm. I like a little hot dog steamer in there. Go ahead and touch my chest. No. What's in your wallet? You got any mustard in there? Hey, so I just switched my car insurance to State Farm. Saved like 480 bucks. That's a lot of money. I know, right? Wait. You have a car? Yeah, an SUV. Switch and you could save 480 bucks with State Farm.
This Italian BMT is amazing. Not like I'm in Italy. Who's talking to me? They're never talking to you. What? Never. Get to Subway for the Italian collection. Lose yourself in the meatball pepperoni melt with Primo Provolone or the Italian BMT. Subway, eat fresh. Weather conditions aren't nearly as nice as where we came from, but the wind chill is down below. But attendance for bear collection. Hey, I got record loads out there, so buckle up and thank you for flying with us. Now with my Buick Remote Start, the new Buick Enclave makes sure you're ready for anything. Just one more way, the new Enclave is smart, made, beautiful. The great thing about our many breakfast options? You did a great job, it looks good. Is there right next to our many other breakfast options? Feel the Hamptonality. BlackBerry Hub allows you to manage all of your conversations with a simple swipe. It's the gathering place for every message and notification you receive. And because you never have to close an app to get to the BlackBerry Hub, you can flow effortlessly between messages and conversations. It's a totally fluid and seamless experience. Only on the new BlackBerry Z10. Powered by BlackBerry 10. Keep moving. An eight nine here, and we've got Kansas and Western Kentucky coming up later tonight on TNT. Well, in last year's round of 64, there were two major upsets as 15 seeded Norfolk State upset second seeded Missouri by two. And then on the same day, 15 seed Lehigh upset second seeded Duke 75 to 70. A 15 seed has only beaten a two seed six times in tournament history the roll call some pretty impressive teams over the years but not that many and here we have a two and 15 matchup georgetown and the 15th seeded eagles of florida gulf coast approaching three to play freshman graf on top well a lot of game left to be played in this one before we start talking about upset but i love the intensity coach infield has brought to his upstart Florida Gulf Coast. Faradell from Switzerland lets it fly. Nice rebound inside by Sherwood Brown. Out of bounds and off the Hoyas. Let's take a look at the roll call of teams that came in as 15 seeds and won over twos. Richmond and Santa Clara with Steve, Steve Nash back Nash, in 93. Right, right. Hampton over Iowa State. Great feet inside and a quick foul. Will send Eddie Murray to the free throw line for the Eagle. This is the third time out of a mm -hmm. underneath out of bounds play for the Eagles that they've gotten something, either a foul or a basket, out of an inbounds play. Nice call there by Coach Infield. Trollick picks up his first foul for the Hoyas, who have now gone scoreless from the field in over seven minutes. They get full coverage of the 2013 Division I. Women's basketball tournament at NCAA.com slash women's final four. And it's driving me crazy. All these guys missing free throws. Especially when you have a chance to do something special here. I mean, I free throws. I hear you. And oh, my goodness. How ironic is it that <sighs> their coach, Glenn, yes. <laughs> is one of the best Glenn shooters. Nation, right, and shooting free throws. 92%. Right. He says at one time he beat Reggie in a shooting contest, which it's interesting. Reggie has failed to remember. <laughs> but I'm, you know what? I'm going to believe the coach in that one. Charlie, you would believe the coach instead of your own partner? Shot clock at five, way outside, launched by Starks. 
It's picked up by Graff. Weaving and flying and hesitating and looking for the open guy. You better, oh, look, yeah. you better look at the open basket. <laughs> there we go. Good gracious. Timeout taken by Florida Gulf Coast. With a two-point lead and a low-scoring first half from Philadelphia on TBS. Well, just a week ago, Reggie and I, along with Dan Bonner, were at uh, the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, for the Mountain West Championship game. That was the number one RPI conference coming into this tournament. And when we watched New Mexico win the Mountain West, we were saying they, they easily could have been the number two seed. But and no then in, there were two. And no, <laughs> no energy, nothing in this tournament so far, unless for Colorado State, Larry Station's team. Brown trying to... Scoop it up there. Porter will save it. Porter has struggled from the floor. He is 2 of 7. The reigning Big East player of the year with it now. Meet the defense of Murray at the other end with a minute and a half to play. And even if with the minute and a half to play, watch closely as Florida Gulf Coast and they speed Georgetown up. Georgetown has a little bit of difficulty in handling it. Now they're in their front court and they play the game they want to play. Trollick in the graph and he ties the game against the glass. He's got his first two tonight. Graph the other way. They don't waste a lot of time. He got off the alley and traveled. He left his feet and that usually is a problem. Talking about Tyler's first bucket here. He easily could have quickly gone the other way. But nice body control here by Tyler using the glass after taking the contact. Yeah, Charles, big, strong guy, man. He uh, can take the bumps, still finish. Starts, you can spin on a dime. Lubick trying to set a screen. We've had two ties. We've had eight lead changes and a very close, obviously, first half here in Philly. Porter, under a minute to play. Solid. And Starks got Graff again off his feet, picked up by Murray. He vacuums that in, and Graff will take it the other way. 40 seconds to play. Well, we already said that the Eagles were going to come in this game very loose, mm -hmm. with not a lot of pressure going into halftime. They're up two, down two. Huge oh, conference. good pass to Murray, clubbed up high, and a foul. And a hard crash there by Starks. Well, they may not be able to make free throws, but you talk about crisp passes especially in the interior look at that pass there by feeler down low that's how you that's how you, you become a zone buster trollick was the one who fell murray is at the free throw one well the flash in and then finding a player along the baseline in the short corner you get that ball at that sweet spot right in the middle below the free throw line there are a lot of things you can do with it 373 percent from the line this season wins the first for the gulf coast was the first team officially in this season's NCAA tournament with a win over Mercer in the A-Sun Conference Tournament Final. It's two right there. Another two-point lead, half minute to play. Porter. And starts on the side now to Trump. Going for the last shot here. Spread the floor. Starks wants some room. The defense provided by Graff, down to six. Trowick, Porter, one to fire. Nothing doing. Nice defense by Florida Gulf Coast. Porter didn't score in the last 15 and a half minutes of that first half. He is the leading scorer for Georgetown, the Big East Player of the Year, as we've mentioned. And his Hoyas, the two seed, down by two to Florida Gulf Coast, making their NCAA tournament debut. Over to Lewis Johnson. All right, thanks very much. Coach, how is this up-tempo style of offense uh, serving you guys here in the first half? Well, Georgetown's tough to play against. They slowed the tempo down. They're very physical. We've missed a few layups in transition, missed a few open threes, and missed a few free throws. So we're not playing great offensively, but we're defending. So we're actually playing Georgetown's game right now. We're playing a lot of zone. So as long as we keep defending, challenging shots, and rebounding, we'll be in the game all night. All right, thanks. Thank you. Kevin? All right, our first half has come to a close. We're going to send you to the AT&T at the half after these messages as you're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship.
AT&T at the half is presented by AT&T. Rethink possible. Hi, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to AT&T at the half. Florida Gulf Coast leading Georgetown 24 to 22. I'm joined by Greg Anthony, Kenny Smith, and Charles Barkley. I'm going to go way out on a limb here and say Georgetown scoring one field goal in the last 10 minutes of the first half is not the way you go about winning a basketball game. No, if you did the numbers, it probably does not lead to victory. They Listen, 9 of 27 from the field, only 1 of 8 from the 3. Listen, they played well enough defensively. It's not as if Florida Gulf Coast is shooting lights out. They're only 30% themselves. But this is a theme we're seeing with a lot of quality teams because they don't over, overpower you. They don't impose their will. They play the game and allow you to play the game. If they're not making shots, they are primed for an upset. Yeah, when you're a number two, when you're a number two seed, a number one seed, and you're playing a 15 or 16, how you get a, a big lead, Greg, is defensively, because you 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 should be able to take them out of their offense or, or make them do things that are uncomfortable. But Georgetown today has not made Florida Gulf Coast do anything uncomfortable. That, that's the only difference to me between a two seed and a 15 is because I could take you out of your game defensively. Offensively, every kid around the country can shoot the ball. Every kid around the country can dribble the basketball if you allow them to do it. The problem is they can't, a lot of them can't do it under duress. And that's why you're a 15 seed because most of the time you can't do it under duress. It always, it's always fascinates me when I'm watching these games and how to piggyback on Kenny's point is, if you got more talent, I would never let the other team play the way they wanted to, pass it around, just go out and have fun. I would say, okay, we're going to physically impose our will, like Louisville did last night, like VCU did. Like, I'm never going to let a team that's inferior, inferior like, just do what they want to do. You have to go out there and say, okay, we're going to get in them. We're going to get in their jocks. We're going to beat them up if they come down the lane. If we're big enough, we're going to get every offensive rebound. That's the way you impose your will on a team that has less talent. And listen, you guys are right about that. I mean, they defensively, they did. I mean, Florida Gulf Coast, 8 of 26. But at the end of the day, as good as you are defensively, you still got to make shots. You, you know, nine field goals and a half if you're Georgetown. One three-pointer is not going to get it done. They're going to have to play better offensively. They've done a good enough job defensively. Their offense is hurting them. But see, Greg, I, I, I mean when I impose that will turning them over because when you turn them over you're going to get easier baskets as well I think Florida goes home only have like four or five turnovers they don't have many turnovers so they're not turning the ball over it so now you're still only relying on the fact of how you well you shoot the basketball I can't just rely on how well I shoot it I have to get easy layups and transition and the only way to do that is turn you over get you out of the offense and of course the other aspect of that is that's for one half. You have to continue to do it the rest of the night Question. so far. It's a halftime score of 24 to 22. <laughs> Number two, Georgetown down by two at halftime. Moments ago, our Lewis Johnson caught up with the Big East Coach of the Year, John Thompson III. Well, Coach, what would you need to do differently here in the second half? Offensively, we have to be a lot better. You know, their, their, their matchup defense we, caused us to be too stagnant. We were standing around watching, not attacking. And so we have to be more aggressive uh, at the offensive end, and then we have to limit their transition baskets. All right, thanks. Thank you. Well, they're shooting 33%. Florida Gulf Coast is shooting 31% in the first half. And 50% from the free throw line. Yeah. And you could imagine if Coach Andy Enfield's team would have made free throws, they could have been up double digits. But he's right. The matchup zone really gave Georgetown a lot of problems. Curious to see if Thompson and Brown are going to be active more in transition try to get the Eagles going some more. Well, another reason why Georgetown has been missing a lot of shots is because they have been kind of rushing at times and other times settling. And when you take a look here at the poor offense, this is where you're settling for jumpers. Here, that was a rush inside by Otto Porter not getting himself set. And once again, Porter that's missing easy one. That's uncharacteristic of him. All right, now let's take a look at the first half stance presented by Coke Zero. And it's okay if, uh, you know, you shoot 31%. If you're, <laughs> the team you're going against is shooting 33%, 9 of 27. Well, for Georgetown, they've got to establish other guys. I mean, Markel Starks has done a pretty good job in establishing himself. Nine points, four of nine. Early, from though. The field. Those were all early. I know, but he's got to now. He's the threat. He's got to be able to put the ball on the floor. He's the one that's got to attack 
force Florida Gulf Coast to adjust and then find open men. So at the 10-minute mark in the first half, Georgetown led by seven. They scored only four points the rest of the way, missing 13 of 15 shots. 108 a start for Florida Gulf Coast. These first five minutes will be huge. huge. It's a five-point lead for the number 15 seed, their biggest tonight. And I want me to tell you what happens, too, because the nightcap game between San Diego State and Oklahoma as the Eagles come up with the steal at the line. Oh, fielder up high and down hard on a sweet alley-oop. And making their presence felt here early in the second half. And Florida Gulf Coast, they only brought a couple hundred people, made the trek here all the way from Florida. But all the fans looking for the upset here from Oklahoma and San Diego State are starting to cheer on the Eagles here. Trowick got it. He's got four. One minute gone. Inside. McKnight. Lubick. Trowick. And starts. Knight has to be stronger down low, and he's catching the ball and going to go up. Yeah, and those are the kinds of plays that become momentum killers. As Georgetown has already scored. Porter is only two or seven. Outside he goes here. Smith Rivera on the move, and he finds two. Here comes Comer. This kid right here played high school basketball with Austin Rivers down in Orlando, Florida. They were quite a pair. Rivers, of course, went on to Duke. Field. From Parkersburg, West Virginia. Shot clock now. Single digits down to seven. And isn't this interesting? Florida Gulf Coast is the one now playing pattern basketball. Fielder Porter defends the three. And retrieved on the baseline by Jabril Trowick. He's got four boards. Lubick at the other end. What a pass and a great conversion. What a pass, but what a finish there by Lubick. Boy, Talk. you talk about flipping the switch. Florida Gulf Coast playing the pattern basketball. Makes a mistake. Georgetown on the other end running down the throats of Florida Gulf Coast. Here's where it was working for Florida Gulf Coast on that lob, the feeler. But on the flip side... Lubick running the floor now. Nice pass there by Starks and the finish. Georgetown 6 nothing run. Look at these low seed victories right here already, Ernie Johnson, in this tournament. Here we have a 15 on top of a 2 with 17.49 to play in the second half. Let's see Harvard, Cal, Oregon, Ole Miss, and LaSalle. And we've got two teams from the Mountain West, Reggie, which is... The number one RPI conference heading into this tournament. But very misleading. You and I were talking in the break. That Oregon should have been a number five seed. Yes. And that UNLV should have been a number 12 seed. Comer. Oh, that was a beautiful acrobatic shot. And it was put over Markel Starks. Sherwood Brown is mixing it up with everyone on the Georgetown Hoya. And I love it. I mean, this kid is not backing down. We heard his pregame speech to get his teammates pumped up and involved. This kid, you know, I talked about, he benches 300 pounds. He looks like a safety in the NFL, the most athletic player on this Eagle team. Starts with a three outside. As he's put in another, his second of the night. Hey, Georgetown has started this half running four of four from the floor. Well, again... Starks is their playmaker, but because he's been proficient offensively and no one else has, they've got to go to him for offense. Brown trying to bulldoze his way in. It'll be off of the Hoyas and Devontae Smith-Rivera. And then this is about the fourth time that Eddie Murray's had the ball thrown to him that he has not been able to catch it clean. If he could have caught it clean, he would have wide open shots and opportunities to score. Yeah, that's something a lot of big guys have to work on, hand-eye coordination with those kinds of passes. Thompson with a triple. And the lead goes back to Florida Gulf Coast. They are not blinking against the two-seat Hoyas. The key is when Georgetown, and they're going to go on a run here, how they weather it. Very much the way we saw Harvard weather the storm against New Mexico last night and still find a way to win the ball game. How are they going to weather oh, the Oh, Comer with a great move and slammed in! Oh, Murray pumps it down! 
Trailing the play, and the lead is at five. You gotta believe. And Reggie, you talked about Murray having trouble catching passes. Well, he's not in there to catch passes. <laughs> As we see now, he's in there to clean it up. Starts throwing him out three, penetrates and kicks it outside to Trunk with a three. Comer got a hand on it. Picked up inside by Eddie Murray. He's got five rebounds for the Eagles. Comer, he's got his foot on the throttle and zipping the other way. Now you talk about athleticism. That ball was underneath the rim, and Murray pulls it from underneath, pushes it back up there, and flushes it. But well, where are any of the great jerseys in transition? Lubin goes for the block shot on Comer. You gotta have some other great jerseys in there rebounding. Thompson just hit a three. Here's Brown back to Thompson in the corner. Oh, they believe. They believe now. And not only do they believe, but everyone in this building, including the Oklahoma and San Diego State fans are on their feet. Eight nothing run by Florida Gulf Coast. A lot of time left though. A lot of time left here for the Hoyas. They go inside. Trollick and that ball knocked away. So Florida Gulf Coast on top by eight. Biggest lead tonight. And everybody has had a hand in it. It's been proud of Thompson and Murray. Right on down the line. From Fort Myers, Florida, Florida Gulf Coast on top by eight, taking a look at the Infinity Coaches spotlight and the infield. I know that experience at Florida State in the NBA with a couple teams, obviously playing now into the way he prepared his team for the second inning. Yeah, Andy has played, uh, I'm sorry, coached under guys like Mike Dunleavy where he told me he learned NBA sets under Rick Pitino motivation and dealing with people and Leonard Hamilton on how to build a program so he's had some real valuable experience from some top-notch coaches Trollick at the line for the Hoyas and he's really running this organization and don't take this in a bad sense almost like an NBA team he gives the guys a lot of free license especially on the court he recognizes guys strengths and weaknesses and he puts that into the playbook and they play free, they play loose, and they play for one another. And that's all you can ask for at the end of the day. Here's Comer has been putting a lot of stress on that Georgetown defense. With his baseline to baseline moves, he takes it inside. <laughs> Feeler, shot clock at 16, plenty of time. Murray, Thompson's pulling a couple of threes. They're looking for a real good one. They've had some opportunities. Coaching <laughs> 15 to play, shot clock at five. Comer, oh, oh the Murray drops the sledgehammer. I told you, Comer has eyes on the back of his head. All you have to do is run the floor a hard cut, he, and he'll find you. He is a fun player to watch. He's got six assists. They got Trowick outside, starts for three. Off the Hoyas. I'll tell you what else Brett Comer has, the patience of Job. Take a look. Shot clock look is running down, and he finally delivers it when it's almost down to the nub. So he just waited and waited until he found something. They're playing with confidence now with a corkscrew move there. Feeler outside Murray, and Murray has caught fire. Eddie Murray from North Fort Myers, Florida. A 12-2 run, the biggest lead tonight for Florida Gulf Coast. When a team doesn't care and they believe in one another and they're not intimidated by a seed or a player, remember, this is the same team that beat Miami, that competed for a half for 34 minutes against Duke. They're not going to be scared because of Georgetown and the pedigree. Porter is 2 of 8, has one just 4 points tonight. No. Brown, no. Three. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Well, the co-champs uh, share that Big East championship in uh, the regular season. Georgetown, the two-seed, Lenny down by 13. Well, I'll tell you what, I think Georgetown is completely shell-shocked at the athleticism of Eddie Murray, uh, of Feeler of um, Sherrod Brown. I mean, these guys are getting it done. And Brown will take it. Held that time, and yep, he was held that time by Jabril Trellick of the Hoyas. Sherwood Brown, again, athletic, strong. He doesn't mind 
taking the bump. And Troy doesn't mind trying to dish it out. And I think you've got to keep your temper in check. Troy now, they're starting to lose their composure. Well, I'm going to tell you why they're starting to lose their composure, because Brown, all game, has been in their face. Uh, the plays afterwards, the little nudges, and it all adds up now because they have a 13-point lead. He's been doing all the talking, but Brown's been able to back it up. And now the frustration of Georgetown, that was an intentional foul. That's why Sherwood Brown is at the free throw line. Well, it's, it's a flagrant foul. I don't think there's any more intentional fouls. Right, flagrant, flagrant one. one. So two shots, and they'll get the ball. The frustration begins right here. Their best player, Otto Porter, just can't seem to get on track. He's had some easy ones. He's been defense nicely. And it's just been frustrating for his teammates to watch. Now, he's kept his cool for the most part, but his teammates seem to be losing their composure. And I reiterate, I think they are shocked at the electric athleticism of Brown, of Murray. Well, here's the problem with team. that. Here's the problem with that. They, they were sitting around watching the same games we were yesterday. They saw New Me uh, Hartford stun New Mexico. So there's really no excuse because you know it's possible. It's not like they started the tournament like that. They saw all, they saw Marquette struggle against Davidson. But, but that shouldn't be. That should not be an excuse, Lynn. Red, you were that age at one time. You gotta say, not us. That ain't happening to us. <laughs> Thompson and fouled on the play is Florida Gulf Coast is on a 15 to 2 run the last five appearances in this tournament for the Georgetown Hoyans well since the final four appearance they're two and four in the NCAA tournament and they've gone out a lot earlier than people have expected Smith Rivera picks up his third foul for Georgetown well that shows me focus too yeah I mean you're looking at someone's seed as opposed to looking uh, at some videotape of players, <laughs> right? You're just looking at the seat, okay, we're gonna get by him as opposed to sitting down and actually looking at the player playing across you. Thompson's got 17, he averages 14. Another one right there, 19 to two since we were tied at 31. Brett Comer's over here looking this at Lynn and I and just has the biggest smile on his face. Just enjoying the moment. I mean, right now, this is their shining moment. This is settling for shots. You can't panic. There's plenty of time. And see what this pressure is going to do now. It's going to get Florida Gulf Coast. Once they get their hands on the ball, it's going to get them running. That was a double put. Yeah, sure was. Yeah, he was trying to get the ball up to Thompson. Feeler was the one to bring it up. That's the turnover. Comer's got to come back and get the basketball. He's the best ball handler yeah. on the floor for the Eagles. Come back and get the basketball. But there's a huge risk with Georgetown pressuring Florida Gulf Coast. That's right into their hands. They want to yeah. run. Oh, yeah. Then Porter has got four points, two of eight. We have a whistle. It's on Georgetown. And a turnover right there in this 17-point lead for the 15-seed foul tournament score. Stats and news live on the CBS Sports app. Get it free by texting SCORE to 42777 or by visiting cbsports.com slash mobile from your phone or tablet. Comer waves everybody out says, I got this. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Be the point guard and leader on this team. Wave everyone off. Get everyone in their, their rightful spots. Brown. Cohen is now coming off the John Thompson the third bench. Good feed. Cohen and slamming it in his field. Tell you, this kid, Brett Cohen. I, I know Thompson, Brown, they do a lot of the heavy lifting. Murray's been fantastic. But the engine has been Brett Cohen. Good feed, and Cohen will put it through. Starts. This isn't the ball. Homer with the fake in the pass. And picked up the other way after. And at the other end, a couple of slams put in by Aaron Paul in the shot ball from Jacksonville. And maybe the mistake Georgetown has made is that they haven't run. Yeah. You look at them, they got athletes that can get out there and go as well, but they seem to be content trying to play a half-court brand of basketball. And how about Coach Thompson looking for a spark? Bowen off the bench, too quick. Back-to-back -back dunk bucket. He only averages one point a game and a foul there on Bowen. A little aggressive but trying to make things happen. 
The Florida Gulf Coast on top, 52 to 37. Their lead as high as 19. The emotion is pouring out of the Eagles tonight in Philadelphia on TBS. Hey. Something else, Ernie. 52 to 37. The Eagles from Fort Myers. As you take a look at the bottom of the south, that's our score. 11 and a half to play. Lenny in this half, Florida Gulf Coast shooting 71% from the floor. And that's because they're able to run the floor, get out and get going after turnovers, after rebounds, and they really showed their strength. Now, Georgetown, on the other hand, they put some athletes on the floor. There have been spurts for them to get up and down, but they've gotten themselves into a very deep hole. And now they're covering Brown. Thompson on top, 71% in the second half to shooting. For Florida Gulf Coast. That's your John Thompson the third. Paging Otto Porter Jr. Murray can't catch up with the Comer pass. And that is the second turnover of the second half for Enfield's Eagles. A little too much top spin on that bounce mm -hmm. pass. And here's that matchup zone that really gave Georgetown problems in the first half. Dale Hopkins is inside. Hacked away beautifully by Murray and picked up by Comer. And a hand to Brown. And a foul and crushing to the floor is Sherwood Brown. It looks like there's a technical foul. They called it on, did they call it on Feeler? Yep. Because he knocked the Georgetown guy out of the way to help his teammate take a look at the push. Brown ready to slam. And then immediately after that, looked like he was kicked in the head while he was down, and maybe that's why Feeler reacted when he was rolling. He hit the he hit the ground hard. And you see that pushing him out the way right there, and that's where the tech occurred. That's ridiculous. That's not a technical foul. He, all he's doing is moving him away so no one would step on the head of Sherwood Brown. Look, he gets kicked in the head here, and this is when Feeler comes in because he doesn't want anyone to step on his head again. So I, I don't know why that's a technical foul. He's protecting his player who's laying defenseless on the ground. I'm surprised that a tech wasn't called when he was kicked in the head. Terry Moore just came over and uh, visited with us, and uh, John, you relay that conversation. Well, he called it a contact technical foul. So what that means is Sherwood Brown will two, shoot two free throws with no one lined up, and that kick right there might have been called. If I don't think anybody. And then the technical foul was on Feeler, and then Georgetown will take two free throws with no one on the line, and they'll get the possession. Taking the ball out of bounds. Well, we've got a, a veteran crew, a highly decorated Very. crew. They've seen a lot of games, too. Handling this game, yep. Final fours, elite eights, numerous tournaments. And at the free throw line is Sherwood Brown, 65% from the strike, and it bobbles out. Well, they didn't see the kick, because obviously they might have made a call there. Initially, on the drive to the basket, you know, it's put a borderline to be a flagrant one as well. He was utilizing excessive force. But I will say this. In Feeler's defense, I would have done the, the exact same thing because you have your star player, and Porter really is struggling here. You got your star player who just took a hard foul going in for a lay in, gets kicked in the head, and you're trying to protect him. That's his first point in 24 and a half minutes for the Big East Player of the Year. He celebrates 75 years of March Madness by voting for your all-time players, teams, and moments of this tournament. Vote now at NCAA.com slash March Madness. Let's see if this can get Georgetown sparked a little bit, try to get Otto Porter Jr. going. Now he's seen the ball go through the hoop on that second free throw. Lenny, what about the defense on Porter tonight by Florida Gulf Coast? Well, they've done a tremendous job shuttling guys on and off of him. Different guys have been guarding him and kind of wearing him down. And look at the attention he draws when he tries to drive. He got three guys surrounding him. Uh, and there's three different guys during that possession right there on him. Well, this is when you've got to learn and go into your second and third options. Even though the double teams are coming with nine seconds left on the shot clock, you still got to be able to find ways to be productive. 
That's Arms definitely a drive inside by Trollick. Wow. Not even close. What are you thinking? Even with nine seconds, move the ball. He's got four personal fouls. This is like a bull in the china shop right here. Bang. Breaks a few cups and saucers. Says you, this just shows you how much when a when team is confident, borderline a little cocky, how far it can go. Well, the way the landscape of college basketball is evening out, you give a team like a 15 seed. You've already seen 12 seeds during this tournament. A little bit of space, and watch out, and they go into field. Lubick was there. And Lubick picks up the foul for the Hoyas. And that was a nice play right there because Fielder slipped the pick right there. And Comer did a great job of hitting him in stride going to the basket. Georgetown just a little bit late rotating over. Well, 17 years ago, this uh, little school in Fort Myers were conducting classes and trailers. 11 years ago, they beat the, the, uh, put their arena up and constructed. That was probably the nicest building on campus. They went D1 six years ago, a four-year transition period. Now here they are at the big dance. Who says you can't start a university for the sole purpose of creating a basketball team? Conan is. Watch Conan Weeknights to learn more about the Conan State team. Only on TBS. <laughs> Speaking of upstarts. People are probably thinking the same thing about Conan State in this Florida Gulf Coast University. Their debut in the tournament is right now rocking college basketball. Good feed, Porter got it. He still can't hit on the doorstep of the basket. And out of bounds it goes. It will be Florida Gulf Coast. Porter 0 of 6 and starting the game 2 of 3. Well, there's been a lot of bodies around him as well. Point right layup and just can't seem to get it down. That's a rush job by Porter right there. Oh, and a throw away, and now Porter comes in. Murray throws it away for the Eagles. Took his time on that one, didn't succumb to anxiety. Number 10 to play here in Philadelphia. Thompson trapped. Homer, long reach of Porter. The kick outside, Thompson is in the triple. Palmer has the ball, shoved on the play, and a foul against Georgetown. Well, I'll tell you what. You've got Georgetown in gray and the Eagles in blue, and there's so much red that is standing up right now cheering for the Eagles, and that would be San Diego State and Oklahoma. Lubick has four. Trowick has four for Georgetown. Smith Rivera has three fouls on him, and... No one with more than two for Florida Gulf Coast. Well, Rich, to your point, they better be careful what they wish for. <laughs> You're right. Because this team, Florida Gulf Coast, got experience, athleticism, and they win this game all the confidence in the world. That's why you, this is the beauty of this tournament. <laughs> I mean, there, this year there is no one dominant Kentucky team of a year ago. We have five. Unbelievable freshmen played well together to go on to win it. There's no dominant team. There's a lot of good teams, but there's not a great team. Homer now with eight points and eight rebounds. And here is Porter. That's a big three for him, perhaps getting him on track. With about nine to play, Thompson racing the other way. Now consecutive misses. And the other way, Porter galloping into Comer and off to Smith Rivera. Didn't I tell you, Georgetown has discovered that they can run. They don't have to play half-court basketball. And so far, running is trying to get them back into this ballgame. Well, you can see right there the Georgetown's largest deficit overcome this season in a win, eight points. That was at Syracuse in late February. Well, down by as many as 19 tonight. I think they're starting to take a page from Florida Gulf Coast playbook and just starting to run. Try to get out in transition, get some easy ones. But the only problem is do you expend too much energy in trying to come back but you don't have anything left for down the stretch. Aradell is checked in. He's got the ball right now. The player from Switzerland. 
Approaching eight and a half to play in the second half here in Philly. Fila, quarters on him. Coma, he's defended by Smith Rivera. Homer, right down the boulevard. He's got 10. No back down. No, no. Not only does he have 10, though, eight assists to go with those 10 points. Hopkins on to Porter. Green by Hopkins. Porter tries to work around it. Bowen will launch the three way off and out of bounds at Sims. Porter tonight, 4 of 12. Well, you look at Comer right here. He knows he's going into the teeth of the Georgetown defense. He knows they've got shot blockers, but he doesn't care. Look at him use his body to shield off Hopkins and then use that left hand. There's no fear in that man. There's no fear in anyone in blue out here. Thompson will streak by midcourt. And they will set things up with Cohen. Feeler to New England at McKnight. We're trying to save it. He and the ball go out of bounds. 7.41 to play. We take a timeout for the Gulf Coast. Leading 59-45. Y'all know we earned to be here. We earned the right to be here. Nobody gave it to us. And the referee's not going to give it to us. Ain't nobody going to give it to us now. So we got to go out there and take it. Feel me? Now, if you, if you with me, everybody stand up with your hands up. Son, player of the year. Lenny, is as responsible as anyone for this team being where they are. That's right. And so far, they're feeling them. But what they have to do, they have to continue doing what they're doing. Keep on keeping on. You know, their confidence is like helium in a balloon. You just can't lose it. And what it comes down to is push the ball, explore the defense, take advantage of advantage opportunities. But if you don't have it, back it out and run something. They've been very good at back doors and cuts. And here come the Hoyas. And if you're John Thompson the third in the Hoyas, you've got to take a pace from their book and try to get out and get some easy transition ones. On a board of five quick points. But the ball has to be in his hands. There's a lot of time left in this game. You've got the athletes and you've got the size to create some turnovers, but you got to put that pressure out there. 65% shooting in the second half for Florida Gulf Coast. The alley -oop. They were going for the high fly McKnight. Shot clock is at 10. Seven to play. Peridot to Brown. And corralled on the play by Markel Starks. Backed away from behind by McKnight. Oh, that was close. Ooh, I don't know close. about that. Look like he he got a hand on the ball. Look here as Brown. That's where the foul was. Brown oh, got it. I don't know. Not McKnight. Brown picked up the foul. Yeah, it was, it was Brown's foul. His second. McKnight will leave. Murray is back in. But even though they didn't score on the other end, Florida Gulf Coast still attacking. And that's what they have to do. You can't start taking the air out of the ball now. Coming up on six and a half to play on the second half quarter from way outside. Bowen keeps it alive for the Hoyas and retrieves it himself. That's 35 seconds. Shot clock. Outside. Smith Rivera. Fever has the ball. Too early to start taking threes. Exactly. They're jacking threes thinking they can get and cut this deficit in a couple of minutes. Georgetown 3 of 18, going up to three-point shots in the game. There is no 14-point shot. <laughs> but they got to start working this thing and melting it down. Thompson and Porter, under six to play. Porter has put in 10. He averages 16 a game. Starts on the move and down the hole. And a timeout taken. It's a 12-point game. The Hoyas chiseling their way back in in Philadelphia. I'm Zach here in Philadelphia. A 7-10 matchup. San Diego State and Oklahoma. Osby for the Sooners and Jamal Franklin for the Aztecs. Up next here on TBS. Here, 5-42 to play. 15th seed, Florida Gulf Coast. 
First appearance ever in the NCAA tournament. Timeout taken. Oh, stepped on the line. He sure did. Murray, make it feeler, stepped on the line. Saying some of these out of bounds plays, just not enough screens. You know, guys trying to open. You see his left foot right there on the line. Let's see what there's too many bodies down here as well. As the offensive foul there, as Bowen goes right into the chest of Sherwood Brown. Well, John Thompson the third is upset. Well, that's a good call there by Rick Randall, who was right on the play there. Bowen picks up number three. He just runs right through the chest mm -hmm. there of Sherwood Brown. I just I don't understand. You gotta be smart. Some of these man. Plays. Exactly. If he's gonna stand there, step up to him and roll. So you got him on your back and you're open for the pass. So oh, Murray, three. yeah, come back, Murray. Be a press release. Murray's got the ball. Here comes Brown the other way for the Eagles. All set up, five and a half to go. Oh, too much dribbling. Feeler, he'll throw it away. Some turnovers now beginning to mount. One field goal in the last seven minutes plus. For Gulf Coast, they go inside the drive there by Starks and picked up by Field. Eight rebounds for him tonight. Be careful. Get behind some of these ticky tack fouls that they're not calling. Comer snaps it outside. Finally, Thompson the open three. And a foul on the rebound attempt by Florida Gulf Coast with under five to play. That goes on Feeler for the second time. And that three there by Thompson, that was what we call a backbreaker three that he didn't make. And look at Feeler here with the push holding the left arm there. Good call there by the official. Comer's going to check out. Graf will come back in. Here comes McKnight. He'll take the place of Feeler as Coach Andy Enfield has given some of his regulars a little bit of a breather here with some time left. Now, Fielder's been a little bit out of control the last few minutes. I loved his hustle, but McKnight has to do something while he's on the floor. Every time he posts up, it just doesn't anything good come from it. He's got to be a little bit more active at both ends of the floor. Smith Rivera with a mid-range shot. Lubick is back in, but out fought for the ball right there by Sherwood Brown. That's a foul called on Brown. Their leading scorer for Florida Gulf Coast, who picks up number three. And that's the 15 foul for Florida Gulf Coast. I'll tell you what, with Georgetown 10 team fouls and Florida Gulf Coast in the double bonus, they got to be as aggressive as Georgetown. Starts, there's a foul on the perimeter, and that's on the Eagles as well. well they're getting close now. Mm -hmm. And here the crowd in getting a little restless a lot of these ticky tech fouls because I believe Florida Gulf Coast has been just as active going to the the basket with all these hand checks and there's been no calls and I'm just thinking the crowd takes a look at team fouls and Georgetown has had 10 team fouls for a while and Florida Gulf Coast just now in the bonus they could have called that one right there Quarter four, 13 Thompson the other way. The gallop, he throws it up. Oh! <laughs> just about dropped with 427 left. <laughs> got, a, got a scrape red off the field, boy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ready to give it up. I would Look have at this. Kind of this place oh! would have erupted. Starks has three fouls for the Hoyas, and here is Thompson at the line for the Eagles. And that's what you have to do. Stay aggressive if you're Florida Gulf Coast. And Georgetown, you've got to be active as well. Even though you are in the double, you are giving up the double bonus, you've got to continue to stay active. And this is it. Defense! 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 Nate Luby outside the starts. We'll see there, Thompson chasing down the loose ball. And I told you now, Georgetown seems to be about a half step slow. Nobody reacted to that rebound except for Starks. And this is where the pressure and the anxiety of being down and trying to get the ball, this is where it wears you out mentally and physically. So and Rivera's going to pick up a foul on the perimeter here at the 357 mark. Second half, he's got four. And a timeout. 61-47 Eagles. 
Here's Sherwood Brown at the free throw line for Florida Gulf Coast in their NCAA tournament debut. Now, they began 4 of 10. They have gone since 13 of 14 from the line. Tonight, 17 of 24. Georgetown Lenny, 6 of 12 from the free throw strike, but a miss right there on number one. Well, a lot of that speaks to the aggressiveness of Florida Gulf Coast. The way they've been able to take the ball to the basket, utilize back doors. And, and let's face it, they have no fear. They beat Miami this year. They played Duke. They played VCU. They played Iowa State. They were not in awe of Georgetown. No way. They haven't blinked. In fact, it, to me, George, Georgetown has been the one team that's been a, a little bit intimidated. And once again, they had an opportunity to see Florida Gulf Coast, you know, kick out the jam, so to yeah. speak, and play the way they play. They had to be surprised, very surprised, by their quickness and their athleticism. I certainly was, and I've seen a tape of this team. I just didn't realize until you get up close and live that these guys can rise, they're quick, and they're strong. Feeler just picked up his third for the Eagles. It's interesting because every team takes on the life and identity of its coach, but more so its star player. And the, the Sherwood Brown, tough, energetic, doesn't back down. And these guys have been playing like that, very free and loose. Thompson will take it up, breathing by defenders, and kicks it out to Sherwood Brown. Now the Feeler. Now it looks like Florida Gulf Coast is going to take a little air out of the ball. Got to be careful, though. Feeler's got it. The lane is open. The shot clock is at 13. Here comes Comer. Powers in a torture chamber right now. Gets it away, and underneath they go to Brown. Comer, blind passes. That's got to be confidence in your teammates. You got to know where they are, and they got to be there. Brown's got 20. Throw it. He hits a three for the Hoyas. Not too much over helping and reaching in a steal by Georgetown. Outside, Smith Rivera starts and Porter. And they come. Six quick points here by the Hoyas, all off their defense. It's down to a single digit deficit for the two seed. Couple threes for Georgetown has brought them back to within a 64-55 reach here in Philadelphia. Now remember, we talked about strategy several minutes ago and what Florida Gulf Coast should do. I just thought it was too early to take air out of the ball, and I said they've got to be careful. What that does, it stunts their aggressiveness. And Georgetown being aggressive and bringing the ball in and attacking the ball on the pressure, they've got newfound life now. Feeler is ended by Trout, doubled by Bowen. Brown. They can breathe a bit here, perhaps, and Thompson quickly faces some pressure and two and a half to play. And I like what Thompson did. He oh. met the ball, but he turned it over. Here comes Starks. Into Brown and Comer, and they call a foul, I think, on Brett Comer. Uh, and my only question is, why hasn't Brett Comer, especially when they get the ball over half court, take come it himself. And, can, uh, and get the basketball and run the offense. It's his third. When they were at their best tonight, Comer had the ball yes. in his hand. And He's was a racing calming influence on this team. No disrespect to Bernard Thompson. Great player, but he's a little bit perky-jerky and loose with the basketball. Here starts down the line for Georgetown. And right now, DeLon Graff is about to come into the ball game, I think, to get an extra ball handler. And Good passer. Point. And they're taking Murray out, and they're bringing Graff in, another backup point guard. To try to get better ball handling. And now you have a smaller unit on the floor here for Florida Gulf Coast. Brown. You're coming back. You've got to make your free throw. Your Georgetown. There's a foul goes on Bowen as he was working on the freshman draft who was taking it the other way. Bowen's got four. Smith Rivera has four, Trowick has four, Lubick has four. The foul situation for John Thompson the third. Yeah, it's, it's it's one of those nights here in Philadelphia. And yeah. if Graf would have looked up the floor, he had Chase Feeler wide open underneath the basket for a dunk. But a lot of pressure there by the Hoyas. 
And now Andy Enfield's going to go offense, defense. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. It tells you it's the Eagles night. <laughs> oh, we don't know yet, Lynn. Well, I'm telling don't you right know now. Yet, Lynn. That's, a, that's a sign right there. <laughs> Gulf Coast with a timeout. Georgetown has two. Gremlins in this building. <laughs> Smith Ravel quickly by Nick. Here comes Starks by Thompson. Outside Trollick at three. And Porter with the big rebound. Off balance in for two. And Bowen with the tap in. And he's got six for Georgetown. Brown. Comer. Off the top. Oh, no. He drops the end. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Feeler has brought him out of their seat. Here's a three. Smith Ravel with the whistle. Oh my goodness! Are Woo! you kidding me, Brett Comer? Welcome to your Kodak moment, my friend. Not worried about the pressure, just throws it to the sky. They are like a circus. Chase <laughs> Feeler, the junior from Parkersburg, West Virginia. They're the high flyers. They're the real Cinderella. He said something kind of interesting during that break. He said, you think Georgetown is a little bit stunned with the athleticism of the Eagles? And there's no question about it. I mean, it's one thing to look at it on tape and to watch them play. It's another thing to see it up close and personal. I guarantee you they haven't seen a, a guy like Feeler do what he just did. <laughs> I mean, elbow over the rim with the hard flush. You mean all the players that are in the Big East, you're telling me they haven't seen players like this? Absolutely they no, have. No, man. no, I'm talking about this team. They're not playing a Big East team. Well, that just lets and me know they haven't watched tape. Yeah, I know, but they. But I don't, think, I don't think they've seen it. It's different to see it up close and personal. It's one thing to see it on tape. It's another thing up close and personal. In your Big East, you play those guys several times in your career. You believe that. Owen is now 2-2 two two from the free throw line. Thompson. Out of his strength jacket, he gets it off to Comer. Yeah, these officials are reluctant to call anything. There's a lot of contact against the Eagles. Porter was on Thompson. Porter will pick up his second personal foul for Georgetown. If you're Florida Gulf Coast, all you got to do is take the foul to make your free throws. Yes, I agree. That's all it is. Don't yeah. be afraid to take the foul. Well, that's easier said than done in the first half. Six of 12 really struggled from the free throw line. They've done a better job here in the second half. Thompson's been at the line a lot, a lot tonight. There is the wife, Amanda, infield of Coach Andy. There's his face right, the big fathead picture right there on the side. And you can see what he's been trying to do with this team and get them on the map. Thompson at the stripe, 7 of 10 tonight at the line for the Eagles from Fort Myers, Florida. And if you're Georgetown, you got to take this possession no matter what happens. You've got the score. I'd go for a quick two and then turn around. A tie-up is as good as a steal because the arrows point in their direction. And then you talk about all the Eagles have to do is make free throws. Thompson, one of two on that possession. Smith Rivera puts up a three. Solid comes up with the loose ball. Outside the starts and bumped on the play by Thompson. Number three on him. And 119 to play in an eight-point game and free throws for Georgetown. Oh, plenty of time left, too. You knock both of these down, you make it a two-possession game. And the way that the Florida Gulf has uh, really struggled to get the ball in, But once they, if and when they get it in, they've got to understand Georgetown has to come to them. They don't have to rush. They don't have to take risks because Georgetown, the clock is against them. And they've got to make something happen quickly. Well, in, Coach Infield brought in Graf for an extra ball handler, took him out. Now they came back with Christoph Verdell, a, a better free throw shooter. Starts it's right there. Steven Domingo and John Caprio come in for Georgetown. Whoa, whoa. Bowen. That's tough. If you're going to call it in the first half, call it now when the game's on the line. This is a foul. Yeah, you got him on the arm. Yeah, that's, that's a foul. They're going to put it on Starks. Or Bowen, let's see which one. Trying to make the steal, but it's... 
I'm not so sure they call that in the first time. Bowen picks up the foul. But it may have been on starts. Now that Bowen has fouled for Georgetown. And again, we talked about what this tournament is all about. This is a part of it, too. Clutch free throws down the stretch. Yeah, they say guy has five, and Bowen is still on the floor. Bowen's going to leave. He was out there for the first free throw. Although there seems to be, you can see, you can see they've got some questions here. Did they call it on Bowen? Yes. They called it on Bowen, and that's five fouls. Because Starch looked like he whacked him, too. Well, pick your poison, Kev. Well, Bowen is still on the floor. And Bowen now leaves. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if there's an argument that it's Bowen, but Starks, in my estimation, far more valuable right now yes. than Bowen. Yeah, I, you want to keep if him you're on Bowen, the floor. I don't know why you're waiting on the, Watch on it again. the floor. There's Bowen, but there's Starks. It's Starks. Oh, it's Starks. 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 Yeah, absolutely, yeah. it was Starks. Whoa. And they're allowed to go to the monitor, I believe, to check and see if they got the right guy. I guess on the line. I don't know about the foul. Here's no. Thompson. Finally, Thompson gets two to go. They knew they had the right guy, so I guess that's what it is. You can't check on a common foul. Thompson with 23, a three by Starks. Put that down for Georgetown, and here comes Brown, held around the waist that time by Stephen Domingo, the freshman from San Francisco, number one on him. Just checked in, and in for that purpose right there. Well, look, at, shot. look how deep this three is. Really no pressure. If you're Thompson, you've got to put a bubble around that three-point line. And by right, he's not even supposed to be on the floor. Five of eight from the free throw line tonight for Sherwood Brown, but he's missed two of his last three, and 104 to play, and his team by five. Now six. Looks like Sherwood Brown is <laughs> talking to everyone on the line here in a gray jersey. <laughs> and this is smart right here to pick up pressure, not allow Georgetown to roll the basketball up without time coming off the clock. And I like the idea of staying aggressive yeah, defensively. Yes. Starks is dancing on the defense. He hits another one. He's got 23 tonight. Markel Starks. 52 seconds to play. It's Murray who is quickly fouled by Devonte Smith Rivera, and he's got five. And he'll be the second Hoya to foul out of the game. Starks a moment ago. Talk about dancing at top. Just knocked down a three on the previous play. Thompson does a better job of guarding him. Better shot there for Markel Starks. Now you're, you're trading twos for threes at the other end. Murray is at the line for Florida Gulf Coast. It was a 19-point lead early in the game for the Eagles. Georgetown has come back and tried to play at that same high speed they've seen Florida Gulf Coast most of the night. Isn't it funny, during the course of the game, you seem not to be able to make threes and you're offering sputters. But when you need it most when the game is on the line, like this Georgetown offense looks pretty good now. Focus. Yeah. Focus and the understanding that this is about survival. Murray. This will be the longest 51 seconds ever with your coach Andy Enfield. Each team with a timeout. Here they go. Down by five. Starks lets one fly from three. It's picked up by Comer. Chased by Starks. Over to Brown. And quickly fouled on the play by Porter. And isn't that interesting? Brown is just a 66% free throw shooter. But the willingness to give it to him tells you something about how his teammates feel about him. Porter, Porter picked up his third. Here is Brown, who is 7 of 10 at the free throw line tonight for Florida Gulf Coast. That's all nice and dandy, though, but I would like for Brett Comer to have kept that basketball. But you put the ball in the hands 
Well, as I say, the best athlete on the team. He's the one that set the tone. We saw the pregame speech twice. No one's given them anything. So let him bring them home. And he's got the ice water in his veins. That's why they gave it to him. Trollick in quarter for three. And picked up by Comer, who is stripped of the ball. 29 seconds to play. Another free throw opportunity coming up for Florida Gulf Coast. Oh, now they're starting to celebrate. Now you're starting to see the smiles. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I got a confession. Yes. My youngest son, Matthew, told me that this was going to happen. Oh, and now, you, him, now you want to say it? And I looked 29 at him, seconds left on the clock. I looked at him and said, no, nah, there's no way. I'm sorry. I didn't believe. But, Matt, you're right. Comer with 11 points and 10 assists and 6 rebounds. And it's the 15 seed from Fort Myers, Florida, in their NCAA tournament debut. And go to the 9-point lead, half minute to go. Starts, picked up by Feeler. Grabbed and held and fouled again, and more free throws for the Eagles. And that's what, what happens. I lose my bet. I had to humble myself with the national TV. <laughs> the coach's wife is happy and disbelief by the Hoyas. Had a share of the Big East title. A very overachieving season, too, for Georgetown. The way they began, they lost Whittington early in the season to academics. They had the player of the year, the coach of the year, and a two-seat coming into the NCAA. Yeah, they were picked low in the Big East and ultimately wound up being the number one seed in that tournament going 14 and 4. You know, they win 25 games and as you said, overcame the loss of their probably their second best player. But to end like this, this is not what they envisioned. Quarter for two on the fly. Right forward inside is Trellick. Played by Thompson. Clock continues to tick. And a foul. Looks like this is going to be a flagrant one here. Frustration coming on for the Hoyas. Trail by 10. And this is on the What a great scene this is. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> oh, Sherwood Brown is feeling it. No one believed but themselves. Officials are over looking at the monitor to see if this is a flagrant one or two. They want to see if a punch was thrown, I believe. And for some reason, Trawick is always in the middle of these kinds of things, at least for the last <laughs> several games that I've seen Georgetown play. <laughs> Look at Sherwood Brown. He's been nonstop this whole game. He has the swag, I'm telling you. That's what happens when you shock the world. Yes. That's, what, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. He's over here shaking hands, <laughs> giving Kevin high five over here. He's loving it. I ought to think that 17 years ago, it was nothing but an empty piece of ground in Fort Myers. They put up some trailers. They started a school 11 years ago. They built an arena. They went D1 six years oh, ago. A great shot. Look at that. That's a, a great four shot. Four-year transition period. Eligible last year. Terrific season this year of 24 and 10. They won the Atlantic Sun Tournament Championship, beating number one seed Mercer. And in his second season, head coach Andy Enfield has put up a remarkable display against the Big East two seed Georgetown Hoyers. Well, I'll tell you, Georgetown, known for stingy defense, you can't take anything away from them for most of the year. First in field goal percentage. In the Big East, they did a terrific job, second in points allowed, but they allowed Florida Gulf Coast to put up 78 points on them, and that's highly unusual. Well, their first win of the season was against the Miami Hurricane, and maybe their biggest win of the season comes in the NCAA Tournament.
13 seed Eagles of Florida Gulf Coast advance, taking on the winner Sunday of San Diego State, Oklahoma. Well, Rage, you said it, I think, two days ago. You said, if I've got an upset to pick, this is the one, and you were right. A 10-point win as the tears flow. The emotion is there, and the 15 is beating the two. Oh. Tournament games continue now on CBS and TNT and True TV. Coming up on TBS, Big 12 Oklahoma, Mountain West San Diego State. We're going to send you to our studios right after this as we continue with the NCAA Tournament.